This is Mystique's litter. Um, you're gonna notice uh, some stains there because she she gave birth in this uh, cat bed. A lot of times we notice that if we try to change out the cat beds too often, um, even after they give birth, because she we actually changed out the cat bed once already, but she gave birth to one more kitten afterwards. Um, they get fairly upset because they actually really do prefer to have their odors in the cat bed. Um, it gets them unsettled uh, to not have their odor in it at all. Um, so, you know, like, we'll, we'll change it out a few times, but uh, we do usually like them to have some odors in it. Um, so here are her kittens. She's a little bit underneath the bed where she feels safe. So she's actually in a, our bedroom. So there's Mystique. Hi, Mystique. These kittens are, in fact, uh, younger than Brown Sugar's kittens. Let's see if we can try to. But you'll notice that all of Mystique's kittens, they'll have the street three stripes down the back. Although you can see some of the three stripes are. We're, it's working on it, you know, breaking them up. Usually by four weeks, the three stripes are on its way to breaking up. Um, by four weeks, I can tell whether it's going to break up or not, which is one of the things that I look for when I press a kitten. I also look for rib bars. I look for the quality of the stripes. I'm sorry, the quality of the spots, among a few other items. So this litter is predominantly silver. You'll notice. There is one kitten that's a little ambiguous. You'll notice this one right here. This kitten right here has got a lot of brown on its face. So one of the things that we look for when we're trying to determine whether it's going to be a silver or brown is not whether it has brown on the body, but brown on the face. Because what makes a, sil a kitten a silver or brown is a gene called the inhibitor gene. And the inhibitor gene pulls out all the brown color. And it's not completely uncommon for a kitten to be born with some brown in the color of the coat. And the inhibitor gene will pull that brown color out later on, um, turning it into a true, complete silver. Um, and we've seen that happen many times. However, um, these kittens, they'll be born with a white face. And that's how we know that they're going to be silver. You know, if they have a white face, then we know that they have the silver gene. Even if they have a little bit of brown in them, a lot of times that brown will get washed out and uh, go away, and then they'll, they'll become a true silver. Um, but that one kitten there, I pointed out, it's got too much brown in its face that. Uh, Honestly, I'm going to I'm going to go back on the website and I'm going to change this kitten to a, a brown. Now that I've had now that this kitten's had time. This kitten is too brown to be a silver. Too brown. The face is too much brown on it. You can see the brown on the face. So, but you can see the spots on the sides kitten spots spot spot spots and um, so a lot of times you can't tell the quality of the kitten when they're this young so basically it's kind of like you take a balloon that has spots in the balloon when the balloons deflated it's just a bunch of mushed up spots that are really close together as the balloon gets blown up the spots get bigger more clearly defined more detailed the space in between the spots get bigger and the pattern develops. And that's basically what it's like when the bangles grow. But once you deflate that balloon, everything becomes distorted. The image is distorted, the space in between it, the spots are all, you know, distorted. Um, so it's it's really hard, it's difficult to see what that pattern's gonna look like ultimately when it's so small when it's on such a small body. 
um, which is why I like to wait until they're four weeks old before I can determine, you know, ultimately what's going to happen, what the spots are going to look like, whether they're going to be donut rosettes or arrowhead rosettes, paw print rosettes. I mean, it's just way too early to tell right now. Right now, they just look like dots. But as time goes on, I can see the, the shape of the dots. I can tell if the dots start to take on a C shape, I can tell that's an arrowhead rosette. If the dots stay round like a circle, I can tell that's gonna be a donut rosette. If the dots start spreading out and becoming smaller, then that's gonna be a paw print. So, I mean, they, they definitely can evolve and it's just too difficult to tell when they're this young but I like to take these videos because I like to show um, one of the things you can do is you can see like sometimes the dots are like really big versus really small like you can see lots of small dots versus a few big dots like this little guy's got lots of dots lots and lots of dots it's pretty So, but I don't I don't put names on them until they're at least a good two weeks old. Um, so these guys are doing their best trying to trying to nurse, and I'm upsetting them. Yes, you are. You're so cute. Yes, you are. And it's always important that we like to pet them and get them used to contact, you know, as soon as they're born, they like to hold them and cuddle them. She, she don't mind at all, you know, and that, she's used to it, and you get used to people. I mean, this, this is where the socialization really begins, you know, and they get used to people. Squirming and worming. All seven of them. Alive and well. And that's how they sound. There's mama licking and loving. That's the life. <laughs>